Hi, my name is Chris Cool. I'm a PM manager at Microsoft and an organizer at uh, Cloud Native Rejects. Uh, today we have um, uh, Taylor Thomas and we have Matt Butcher, um, and they just presented uh, their talk on WASM. Uh, and so, yeah, folks, um, I would like to first of all say that you know we at Kinfolk just got acquired by Microsoft a few months ago, and so I haven't met you, Matt, Matt before. So this is our first opportunity to say hello, hello, hi, uh, to a colleague. And um, Taylor, I just realized through this talk that you actually are with a new company now. Um, so maybe you guys can uh, talk about your roles at these two companies. Yeah, go ahead and kick it off, Taylor. Yeah, I'll kick mine off. So I work at a company, it's a startup called Cosmonic. It's in the WebAssembly space. Um, as part of it, I'm involved with the, the Wasm Cloud project as well, um, which is something we mentioned in our talk. And um, at there, I'm, I'm actually a director of uh it's a totally made it's a startup right so the title sounds made up but i'm actually doing things i promise it's um called uh director of customer engineering um and so that's my current uh, my current role yeah, cool. and uh yeah i i have been at microsoft for about five years came in through the acquisition of deus and we've been focusing since day one, we were focusing on on container technologies and Kubernetes. We we worked on Helm and Brigade and and Draft and CNAB and all of these container oriented technologies. And about two years ago, uh, as we were kind of investigating some of the limits we were running up uh, against with containers, we at we got this idea like maybe there's something else out there that could be an interesting technology that would fill in this sort of missing gap we saw, right? We've got the big heavy virtual machines on one side, we've got sort of like the middleweight containers, and then it felt like there was sort of a gap there. That we, we could find something that was lightweight, that was small to move around, that could start up nearly instantly, uh, that might not be able to do all the things a container could do, but would be able to do some of the things that really kind of stretch containers to their limits. And that's how we ended up looking at WebAssembly. Uh, it was a kind of one of those funny moments when you're going, yeah, that's a that's a browser technology. Why would we look at that? And then you go, well, wait a minute. You know, the browser's security model matches pretty well with the cloud security model, right? You don't want to, we want to be able to run code in a safe environment, even though you didn't have anything to do with producing the code. So you essentially want the runtime to not trust the, the code you're executing. Well, WebAssembly does that. That's a good cloud fit, right? Uh, you know, web browser instant startup, you know, is the goal of every web developer so that, you know, instantly people's eyeballs are occupied looking at your content instead of drumming their fingers and going, when is this page going to load? Same kind of thing with cloud services, right? We don't want long startup times. We don't want uh, people waiting around for a microservice to load and be able to answer that first request. When something fails, we want it to stand back up right away. So again, we started to see these things kind of line up and in, in very surprising ways, the model of the browser was matching the model for the kind of cloud service that we were kind of imagining ourselves to be able to build. And that really got us started. So that's been what, Taylor, about, was it June 2019 when we really got kicked off in Victoria? Yeah, it was um, 1 BC, the year before the coronavirus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it was it was right around there when we started really looking at it, and then things started taking off there with the Crestlet project. Um, uh, actually, Matt did the first like draft of that around right before Christmas, if I remember right, of 2019, and then it just kind of took off from there. And it was exciting to find out that there are actually a lot of other organizations kind of thinking along similar lines, and we got pretty quickly connected with. The folks at the Bytecode Alliance, um, the uh, Cosmonic, where, where Taylor now works, uh, at the time, many of their developers were at Capital One, I think it was, kind of investigating some of the same things. And we, we talked to them a lot. We talked to all these folks who were all kind of experimenting with, uh, with the idea that uh, WebAssembly had value outside of the browser. Uh, and it's been fun to just kind of be part of that first moment of a, of a I, I guess movement might sound like a grandiose word, but right, that's what we do in technology. We're looking for how to solve mm -hmm. these problems. And then we get some momentum behind something and, and, and people just kind of glom onto it. And then we start writing projects and uh, uh, it's been fun to be in there at kind of like ground zero. 
Yeah, I know. I know you two um, have been like you know working in the container space for a good while, and I know for us, you know, we got started in containers in like 2014 or so. Uh, you know, it was all very exciting. Do you see similarities there and uh, similar potential? I for sure do. A, a lot of what I think we're seeing in the WebAssembly space mirrors some of those early heady Docker days, and and then the you know, the, the great orchestrator wars of what, 15, 16, you know, some of those kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I Maybe I shouldn't refer to them as wars. They weren't really all that contentious, but. I mean, if we're, if we're being blunt, I mean, that's, yeah. that's one way you could put it is they were, they were a bit of the orchestrator wars, but no, I, I definitely agree with Matt here. It, I was also part of that initial, con that container thing. Like I started doing prototypes of it way back in like Docker, 0.6, you know, like way, way back. And it was, um, it, it was really interesting and exciting. There were all these things going on, but things were still so clunky. And like, yeah, like now you could build a container, but like, how did you glue them together? And how did you expose a networking port? All this stuff was, uh, was very difficult still. And I think we're very much in a similar position in WebAssembly. I mean, you're still a little bit of apples to oranges comparison, but there's a lot of similar arcs going on. If right now we're in that, it's still a little rocky, but if you see the technology, you're, you're like, okay, I can see where this is going and how this could be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of what you presented was about like making things easier. So uh, that kind of implies to me that, you know, at least uh, maybe two years ago, it was very difficult. Is it, where, where do you see it now? Like, is there still a lot of work to do or, or uh, to get, to make that super easier? You know, if I'm a, if I'm a developer and don't really know much about, um, Wasm and I'm coming in like what, what's the learning curve there well hopefully the ideal goal here is that there actually will not be much of a learning curve that's why we're excited about Wasi because uh, Wasi gives that ability to in the future just be able to say like use my normal compile tool set the target to Wasm32 Wasi like that's that's what we're hoping the future will be like um, and people are actively working on that um, however, there um, right now, like if you if you had watched all the way through the talk and pay attention, as, as I mentioned when we talked about Wasm Cloud, Wasm Cloud is one of those things that really fills the gap right now because there are missing pieces, and so there's a lot of things that are trying to do that right now and leverage it very well. You see what Fastly is doing with WebAssembly. Um, if you're familiar with Envoy Proxy, they use Web WebAssembly things as well, um, and so these things can be used right now and very effectively. But there's still just that some of those gaps that I think we're still about a year to three years, depending on which thing we're talking about from actually having. So it's there's still a long um, process ahead of us, but even the past year and a half we've been working on it, um, there's been a lot of evolution and changes. But to add to that, <clears throat> you know, I do think that the thing Docker did brilliantly well, uh, in my mind, is the developer experience was very easy to get going on, right? It was it was a matter of uh, writing that first Docker file. Really, that was all there was to it, right? You, you just, I, I just need to point out where things are supposed to go. And, uh, you know, that sort of zero to dopamine uh, hit there was, it was just so great. Mm -hmm. And right. one of the things we like about WebAssembly is that because it's really a matter of setting your compile target or, or using a, a single tool to compile to the right format in the case of scripting languages, it should be very non-intrusive on a developer's regular workflow. Uh, it's kind of mm. kind of cool and kind of neat to be able to compile the same thing to native, uh, test it out locally, compile it to WebAssembly, you know, push it into your runtime, test it out there, and see the same exact results because that's what it is, right? You're just writing code in your language of choice using your libraries of choice and executing them the way you want. Uh, and and you know, there's still yeah. rough edges, and that was the thing about Docker that you and I, uh, you know, enjoyed in those early days, right? You could still dive into the code and mm -hmm. see and go, oh, well, there's holes here, right? The volume system doesn't quite work the way it should. The networking layer is hard, but there was still room for us to jump into the code and actually write the code and patch it. And, you know, there's that initial vibrant uh, community period where the people who are in there, um, everybody wants to just make it work and make it work well. Uh, and then you hit that sort of... Um, concretization a little bit later on where it becomes patches, bug fixes, very, very careful releases. You, you want right. all of those things, but we're not there in WebAssembly yet. It's still very much sort of the Wild West feel. 
Yeah, well, interestingly, you know, we were on the side, we were uh, working on Rocket. Uh -huh. And so that was even another part aspect of this. So there was a lot of, you know, exciting stuff going on. But uh, for the viewer here, uh, Taylor had a, had a, a a delivery coming in, uh, so he dropped out. But I think uh, we're going to do one more question, and that's that's to, to you, Matt. Uh, you start out with the National Association of the W Lovers. Is that like an internal meme inside of the community, or did you guys just fish, fish that out? Uh, since Taylor, you know, just docked out, I can conveniently say, you know, he's a big Sesame Street fan. Uh, yeah, yeah, we we thought it. We have this kind of running joke about how a thing catches on in an ecosystem, and then, uh, you know. Kubernetes, every every project sub project starts with K, you know, or, or Java Land, where yeah. every project, you know, in the early days was all a coffee thing, and uh, and we when we started talking about WebAssembly uh, and, and started that process of naming projects, and we're going, oh my goodness, we're just doing, you know, we just named our project Waggy, and we're falling right into that trap. And Taylor dropped that that reference uh, for the Sesame Street video, and we went, yep, that's. Uh, that's what it is. So I don't know if it'll become a meme, but really for us, it was just sort of one of those uh, interesting capstones on the running joke of now everything's K something and now, uh, uh, now everything's right. Java something. Yeah. So. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, thanks both for your time and I hope your delivery uh, went well, uh, Taylor. Uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks for your presentation. And uh, yeah, um, we'll hopefully see each other soon, uh, Matt, as colleagues. Yep. Thanks again. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye, folks. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.